I'm going for my day word for today from Malachi 4. So if you can read with me, please uh, write in your Bible. Um, if you don't have a Bible that you can write in, come to me. I will give you a Bible that you can write in something. It's one thing for your cell phone, but my brother, my sister, when you know one excellent present you can give your child. I have the Bible of my dad, and what God shared with him, he wrote in this Bible some of it, and it's like precious stones to me. What God said to my dad or to my granddad, you know, my grandpa, and what God spoke to him. And it's awesome to have his Bible and see how he walked with Christ. That's uh, some real present to give your child or your grandchild. So please, get a Bible. Or get from me a Bible. Hallelujah. Okay. Malachi 4. Surely the day is coming it will burn like a furnace. All the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble. And the day that is coming will set them on fire, says the Lord Almighty. What an encouragement. Not a root or a branch will be left to them. But for you who revere my name, other translations will fear my name. And like we said so many times, there's a fear where hell and the devil must run away. But there's a fear that has to do with respect, where I have a, I am arrested by the beauty of his authority. That his authority is like, wow, you know, when you were a little child, and some guys, they never grow up in that area with some of the movies that they watch. I don't, will not call it pathetic, but because it doesn't matter how big the enemy and rah, and all the stuff and all the things. And this guy come in, you know, and he just, do chik -chik -chik, and all the enemy, and they're gone, you know. Have you seen that movies? You know, it doesn't matter if there's a hundred guys coming against this guy. They're all stupid. Nobody can shoot him. But when he lifts just his hand, chaka chaka, then ten is dead. Some of you like that movies, hey? Oh, it's okay. Don't raise your hand. Hallelujah. But what am I saying? And sometimes when the guys, when he's small, he says, wow, look at the authority, the power of that hero. Now God wants us always to wow about him. Because with him, it really happens. He can just lift his finger like that and thousands and millions of demons must go. Boom. Are you with me? Fall in love with his authority. Wow about his authority. And that is to revere his name. That is to fear God. Okay? So what are we saying? My brother, my sister, as we said, many, a lot of Things will happen out in the world, and sometimes we, can, we need to understand not to be stupid and foolish to pray against certain things that God has sent. Because God will shake the heavens and the earth. So when something is shaken in the nations, you need to know, God, is this you shaking it, or is this the devil? That we must pray against the storm, or we must pray that you will manifest yourself walking on the water of the storm. Hello. God could just on the mountain, Father could say, there's a storm and the, the guys are stressing. And Jesus says, ah, Lord, please, just, my Father, just still the storm. Thank you. Boom. The storm is gone. But God wants to manifest himself in the storm. Are you with me? So may God help you. That you understand what to pray and what not to pray. Because there's certain shaking that will be there because God is coming. Are you with me? But for those who revere, those who have respect for my name, the son of righteousness, the son of righteousness will rise. The son of righteousness is Jesus Christ himself. Now the word says, God said to Moses and Aaron, this is the way that they will bless the people. At one phrase of the, that blessing is, he will let his face shine upon you. God will let his face shine upon you. When God is looking at you, it's like the rays of light. 
for you to blossom, for you to come alive when God is looking at you. When your dad is looking at you, his son, his daughter, and may you experience that, how your father is looking at you and how you can blossom because of what he is seeing. How you look at yourself, my brother, my sister, make sure that you look at yourself the way that he looks at you. Otherwise, you'll be in performance, you'll be in rejection, you'll always compare yourself, and you look at the others, and in the light of the others, you will look at yourself. And that's how the, the, you know, remember? The 12 spies, when they came back and they said, oh, we are like, uh, I always joke about the spring canes, uh, it's the uh, grasshoppers. We are like grasshoppers in their eyes. You can see yourself through the eye of the giant, and you'll see yourself as a grasshopper. You'll see your eye, yourself through the eyes of Goliath, and say, what are you doing? This is ridiculous, man. You come with this, and he will mock you. The enemy will mock you. The enemy will belittle you. The enemy will tell you, give you your identity as a grasshopper. Or you look at God and the Son of Righteousness shining upon you and you understand your identity and your healing. Healing under His wings. Those who reveal my name, the Son of Righteousness will shine upon them with healing in His rays and you will go out and jump. This English word, frolic. Like well-fed calves. Okay. That's not your calves. It's a the ones from the cow. You're with me. So there will be a, a jumping in you because of God and what God is doing in your life. My brother, my sister, I mean, we are supposed to be excited about tomorrow for what God's going to do. Amen. This is the last six verses that God is speaking to, the, to his people before he will keep quiet for a few hundred years and Jesus will come. Quite important to understand. Then you will trample on the wicked. They will be ashes under the soles of your feet. On the day when I act, when I work, when I create, says the Lord Almighty. What are we talking about? My brother, my sister, if you need to deal with the enemy, deal with your flesh, deal with the stress and anxiety and negativity, depression, or whatever you're going through, it's supposed to become ashes under your feet. Because you have an expectation, it's the day when God is going to act. Day that God's going to create. Day that God's going to do something excellent. But if you believe that, if you believe that it's going to happen, you need to deal with these things that you give glory to. How do I give glory to it? I honor it by what? By focusing on it. You need to acknowledge what you're going through, but you're not supposed to honor it. But I honor it when I focus more on it than on God. You will know that you honor your situation more than God by how many time you spent with a focus on that and how that thing that you focus on is touching, is touching your heart, touching your emotions, touching your perspective, touching your relationship. That will tell you if you worship that thing or if you just acknowledge in honesty the existence of that thing. Please, may God help you. That thing will be there, but it's supposed to become ashes under your feet. Amen. Why? Because you have the victory. You know, you didn't fight it, but because you know that God is acting. God, tomorrow he's want to, he, he wants to act in your life. He wants to work. He wants to create in you, through you. He wants to do a new thing tomorrow. But he's waiting for you, not you waiting for him. He's waiting for you to position yourself. The church can haste the coming of Christ, the word says. God is waiting for us. Then verse 4. 4 verse 4. Remember. Everybody say Remember. The law of my servant Moses, the decrees and laws I gave him at Horeb, Horeb for all Israel. Remember the law. Not because you are under the law of all the things you must do and you mustn't do. No, because you see the heart of God in it. Now he says, remember the law. And then, see. I need to remember the law. I need to see. I will send the prophets, Elijah, 
to you before the great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. So he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and from the children to the fathers. Or else I would come and strike the land with total destruction. It's not God's heart. It's not God's will for total destruction. Not at all. He wants hearts of children and fathers connected because there's a generation that will praise God. There's a generation that will usher in the coming of Christ. But there's a generation that will grow up. There's a, every next generation, God has faith that that generation will be more mature than the previous generation. I hope, I hope, I hope there's young men that will be so much more mature than whatever, I, in every way I could become. May your children be so much more mature than you. Because then there's acceleration for the coming of Christ. For a bride where it's nothing about herself, but all about the bridegroom. For that bride, God is coming back. And God wants to shake everything so that we can see, I can put my trust in nothing else except in Him. For the sake of His church, for the sake of the bride, Everything will be shaken so that his bride will wake up. The church will wake up and, and do, you will do consolidation, re recon, whatever you want to call it, all those stuff, so that you will know what is of eternal value, what is not of eternal value. And by God's mercy and grace, he's going to shake everything so that the nations can evaluate what is unshakable and what is shakable. But out there it will become more pathetic, 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 more ridiculous in the deception that the most thing that you can think of of type of deception that can be out there that people will go for it people will go for it like we said many times you can use the name of jesus as long as it, you use it as a swear word but you don't dare use that name in the context of respect in a school then you're talking about christ then you're in trouble but you can walk in the school, you can walk in that place and curse the name of Jesus. You can make the movies in that sense. But in the school where there's no religion, no religion means you can curse the name of Jesus. But you cannot talk about that name with respect. Oh, come on. How deep the deception. And he's going to come, become more and more and more and more in the fire. Because the gold is purified, purified in the fire. His bride is going to become beautiful and more beautiful and more beautiful. So there's circumstances that wants to bring the beauty of God in you. But I can go and sit with my attitude. I can hear the gospel. Like, and I can have that pathetic filthiness in my life that I choose. God in his mercy and in his love wants to shake because every child that he accepts when we, God believes you're not a fake child, you're not a fake son, you're not a fake daughter, then discipline will be there. So that we can grow. Now what are we talking about? We see Moses and Elijah. Now the title, I don't know if he's there, is Stand and See. Everybody say, Stand and See. If you can remember those two. My brother, everything will be shaken because the church and you are supposed to stand and see. Stand on the law, stand on the word, and see like the prophets. So everything, the law and the prophets. Many times, oh, we can take four Sundays, five Sundays about the law and the prophets. How many times Jesus speak about the law and the prophets? In the Old Testament, we see everything about the law and the, we see the prophets. Of what will happen. So on that foundation... You will find yourself to be able to see in the future. On the foundation of the word. Are you with me? So make sure you built on the foundation of the word, my brother, my sister, so that you can see the future and you can be excited about the future. But if you don't build the foundations in your life correctly, you cannot see the future. Because then you want a, a word about the future, an encouragement about the future, so that you think out of that you will be able to stand. You'll be able to stand tomorrow if today, with the Holy Spirit, you can jump into the Word. Get the Word syllabus if you want to. Or get, ask Holy Spirit, what must I eat? What must I be? Give me the scripture for today that I must memorize. That I must memorize so that I can meditate on it. The Word says you must meditate, but meditate is after memorizing. Memorizing is just to get it inside. Meditate is to use it in the context of relationship. 
Are you still here? God commands you to meditate on the word. So get it in your head so that it can go to your heart. <laughs> Let's say I will get it in my head so that it can go to my heart so that my feet will walk it out. Uh, are you with me? Okay. The word must come through your feet to people. The living word you must show to people. Are you with me? Are you still with me? So the last thing he said is the whole thing of stand with the laws, with the foundation of the word, and see through the prophetic in the context of relationship. The prophet will come and bring relationships back. Heart of fathers, heart of children, back to one another. So in the prophetic, it's not just to see the future. No. It's to see something of tomorrow so that hearts can be connected, so that relationships can be healthy, so that relationships can be restored. Because at the end of the prophetic, at the end of the future that we call time, it will be, there will be this perfect relationship between God as Father and the nations, His children. Relationship is the perfection of the future, is the perfection of the prophetic. So the context of prophetic will always be in a, in a, in a place of relating, relating with the Father. Somebody can have the gift of, of the prophetic and they can be very accurate without the relationship. But you always, when you find the word, an encouragement, or find what you're supposed to do in the future, it's always, always supposed to bring your heart closer to God. You are still here. Okay, next one. There we go. Ephesians 2.20. We are built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. With Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you too are being built together, together, together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Our father's home. Our father's home. At the end of the day, it's about father creating a home for him. God that looked at heaven and he said, I want more. And in his mind, in his heart, he saw your face. He said, that's what I want. And they will come together. They will mature. They will grow up. They will love one another as I have loved them. And as I will love them, they will love one another. And from that, beauty will rise. And in that place, that's where I want to live. That's my dream beyond heaven. What an awesome, 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 awesome privilege. We don't have a cooking clue yet what it means. But God's going to help us to see more of it. Amen? Of this awesome privilege. But it starts with the foundation will be from the apostles and the prophets. The apostles and the prophets. Apostles lay the foundation. Now we talk about gifts from God. We have the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. We talked about that a few times. You know, like speaking tongues, prophesy, driving out devils healing, a lot of the, the gifts of the Spirit, so that you don't stand and fight the enemy with a toothpick. You know, becoming a clown scene for the devil. But because you allow the gifts to work through you so that the power of God will be seen and everybody will stand amazed at, not you and your gift, but at what God has done. If you administer the gift accurately. And then there's the fruit of the Spirit. But then Jesus also gave five gifts to the body of Christ. To equip them for their destiny, for what they're supposed to do. That is apostles, prophets, teachers, shepherds, and evangelists. Ephesians 4.11. I know you all know it, otherwise you would write it down. Hey, Good. But out of this five, there's two that is foundational in everything. And that is the apostles and the prophets. So we are built, the house is built on that foundation. Whatever you're going to build... You better build on the foundation of laid by apostles. The 12 apostles in the word laid the foundation. Hello, New Testament. New Testament written through all the apostles. Foundations laid. Not every, every, everyone, but 90% apostles that laid the foundation of the New Testament. 
And then the prophets, even through the Old Testament, but also New Testament, to see. Apostles, foundation. Apostolic foundations. Prophetic, to see in the Spirit. To see in the Spirit. Those two, once again, Moses and Elijah. Jesus speaking about the law and the prophets. On the Mount of Transfiguration, who's manifesting? Moses and Elijah. So that I understand, I need foundation, I need to stand, I need to see. I need to stand, I need to see the future. Amen. Are you still here? There we go. That's also part of the day with John 8. Now, you know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But first of all, can I have uh, six people that can throw each guy here with a stone? Um... Any guys in this place? Thank you. More than one guy. Let's take four or five guys. Give each one a brick. We broke it for you just before the service. Um, now in, in John 8. Now you, know, you must go and give your people. You take 20. And uh, you're going to take this brick home. Special for you. You don't have to pay 100 rand for the brick. You can just take it. Okay. Uh, what are we talking about? There's some people there also that need some bricks. Sanele, you must follow. You must take for them there at the fireplace. Okay. What are we saying? John eight. We're talking about the foundations. Hello, the law and the prophets. The foundations to stand and to see. I stand on the word, I see in the spirit. Amen. You are still with me? Now in my day word for today, that I wrote in December, we have uh, John 8. And when he's talking about, when he will, will talk about the truth that will set you free, and where the spirit is, there's freedom, and the spirit will, will put the truth into you by taking the law and making truth that will set you free. Hello? Not the law to condemn you, but the word that will set you free. It starts with a, the story about how the Pharisees came and said, we caught this lady in a lot of rubbish. Shame on her. We caught her in a lot of rubbish. The law, the law, the law of Moses is we need to stone her. What do you say, Lord? As I throw it, but my, what about the floor? Okay, well... I will not throw it. And then Jesus said, the one without sin, the one that has a relationship with God, with nothing hindering the relationship, with nothing be in between them and God that they may need to sort out, the one, that type of guy, first throw, first will be the first to throw a stone. And they had to throw it down. My brother, my sister, I want you to identify. You're going to take it home and then you're going to throw it somewhere. But ask Holy Spirit. Now here you sit and you say, I have nothing against people. You ask Holy Spirit. What is there with some irritation, something? I don't say everybody must have this major love relationship with. No. But what is there as an irritation or something with someone? Someone. That I'm throwing with, with a performance of the law. But then also about yourself. With so many things in your life that you are struggling with. And that you feel, I'm not getting the victory. I'm not getting the victory. But you're not getting the victory because your hand is not open to take the Father's hand and to walk with him into victory. Your hand is with a stone of the law. Ready to throw and to crush things in your own life out of the place of performance for what you have done wrong and what you are still doing wrong. Not your husband or your wife or your children or your parents or your boss or somebody is reminding you of. And then you're crushing beauty in your life with this stone of the law. You need to deal with that because in the whole chapter further, it's all about the Pharisees asking, who are you? Well, me and my father, we are one. Where's your father? What authority do you have to say this? You are from the devil. 
But this is the guys that had the stones. These guys that had the stones, when they couldn't see Jesus, when they realized, hey, no, I have a lot of sin. So he caught me out. I cannot, I cannot stone that lady. And then they heard from God, and they didn't take the truth at all. And at the end of the day, they took up the stone, but this time, to stone him. In the beginning, to stone the woman with a sin, with all the rubbish in her life. But they went through the process of supposed to stand on the word, to see the word, to see in relationship, who is Jesus, who is the Father. Because when they couldn't see it, then they were ready to stone him. Last verse of chapter 8. You don't deal with the things about other people. You don't deal with the issues that you have with yourself. At the end of the day, you will pick up the stone to destroy whatever is from Christ in your life. It will happen. You will destroy everything that is from Christ in your life. If you don't deal with a stone in the hand to throw at somebody or to throw at yourself, where you need to forgive yourself for virginity lost, where you need to forgive yourself for rubbish that you struggle with, throw it down. Are you with me? And come to Christ. See who He is. See who is the Father. And see that relationship. How the Father and Jesus has this love relationship. And Jesus in that passage says, I say nothing unless I see my Father saying that. I do nothing unless I see my Father is doing that. Wow. That's the relationship that God has for you when you are in Christ. Built in Him. So that what? You can see what your father is doing in the nation, in your, in your school, at your university, at your workplace, in your relationship with family members. That you can see what God is saying, your father. And that you're going to only say that, nothing else. God's going to help you, amen. God's going to help me. There we go. But if I do judge, my decisions are right. Because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. I stand with the Father who sent me. You're supposed to stand with your Father who sent you. Hello? Jesus said, Father, you have sent me. And in the way that you send me, I send them. I, Jesus, can send them because they are found in me. If they are not found in me, they have no mandate. They, have, they are not sent at all. Are you still here? God has sent you into that place. God has sent you with that sport. God has sent you with that intellectual capacity or whatever you have. Let it not become a curse in your life. Let it not become a curse. But you may must understand. Because I am not alone. My decisions are right. Your decisions are only right if you stand with God. There's no right decision that will come from you if you don't stand with the Father, if you don't stand with God. So you're going to stand with somebody. You're going to stand with this demon of self-justification. You're going to stand with this demon of, com com of comparison, with this demon of compromise. You're going to stand with someone. So if you're not standing with God and His Word, automatically you will stand with the enemy. And what comes forth from you will... Bring destruction to others and to yourself. And to yourself. Make sure you are stand with him. Jesus says, my decisions are right. Why? Because I'm right. No, because I'm standing with my father. Stand and see. Stand with God. Stand on his word. And you will see the future. And you will be excited about tomorrow. You will be excited about your future. Because you know... When the enemy become dust under your feet, God's going to work. God's going to work. Amen. Next one. So if the Son has said you're free, you will be free indeed. We talked about that. Yes, next one. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. They will have the light of life. What are we talking? You will stand on the word called Jesus Christ because Jesus is the truth. And you will see because Jesus is the light. 
So I stand on who he is. I see what he sees because he's the light. If he's the light, I'm looking into who he is. I'm looking through him. I'm looking and seeing the way he sees things. Are you with me? Because it's him, the light, shining through my eyes. Son of righteousness. Right, there we go. Then they ask him, where is your father? Now we talked about that. Right, next one. Listen to this. I'm, okay, just leave that one away. You can take that away for now. What are we talking? What I'm saying further, what I want to say further, my brother, my sister, yeah, we have a mind, Job. And if you, we want to say, oh, that man, he has a lot of issues. There's a lot of stuff happening in his life. He must build his life on the foundation. He must see the future for a breakthrough. But in this man's life, there's just a shaking. I mean, he's following the Lord. Come on. And then everything is shaken. Oh, he's going to leave it there. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, everything is shaken. Why? Because he has a lot of demonic doors open. A lot of sin in his life. No. Because hell noticed him. Because Lucifer, the devil, noticed him. See, that man, he's following you. But he's following you because you are blessing him. God says you can shake him and you will see. He's not following me because of the blessing. But he's following me because of me. Are you with me? And sometimes we will experience shaking because God wants to take us to the next level. Yeah, the word says God blessed Job in the end double as much. As in the beginning. But it was not the purpose of God, first of all. Devil was saying, hey, that guy, it's just because you give him all the goodies. Because he's going good with you. Well, those guys in Ukraine or Russia or some other places. Will you follow him? You went to church on the Sunday and you're trusting him for... For a new job, you're trusting him for this, you're trusting him for a car, and, uh, and you're trusting him for this, and you prayed for the car, you prayed for the marriage that's coming up, and then one week later, your future wife is blasted into pieces. No car, university gone, job, the, the, the boss is, is gone, killed in, in combat. Uh, what are we praying now this Sunday? Because I trusted last Sunday for these five things to happen. What are you going to say now, this Sunday, to God? What are you going to say? Now that's what the church is, where the church is at, at this stage. Hello? What type of gospel bull do you have? What gospel do you have? That, uh, God's saying, that man is not serving me because of the blessing. He's serving me because of me, because of who I am. So God just told the, the devil, this is the truth. You're accusing him, but I'm telling you the truth. He's serving me because of me. And a lot of that is tested in our lives. And some of that testing, some of that shaking is allowed by God. Not because he wants to destroy us, but he wants to purify us. My brother, my sister, God is coming back for a mature, mature, mature bride. That will shine forth, that will understand the sickness of the deception. And the deception will become more sick out there. So that the church will wake up. Understand the wake up call. How sick must the deception become before the church will wake up and realize what is truth and what is fake. Are you with me? For purification. So this Job, he had some real trouble. And on the one side, all his friends, they encourage, they preach, they condemn, they preach to him, preach to him. And then in the end, his closest friends just gave up. And then, okay, there's his wife. And his wife just said, curse God and die. Wow. Well, those friends, you don't need enemies, eh? But then there's this young prophet, and he says, uh, Sorry, Mr. Job, I know I'm very young. 
I know maybe uh, I know not so much as you in life experiences, but please, I want to speak to you. You have 500 questions. I'm going to give you no answer to all 500 questions. He didn't say it like that, but at the end of the day, that's what happened. And he said what? Now there we go. Listen to this. Listen to this, Job. Stop and consider God's oneness. Stop. Stand and see. Stand and see. You have all your things before God. You have all the confusion. You have all the things that you bring before him. And this prophet comes and says, now, stop, forget about that. I'm not going to even answer you. I'm going to ignore your plea. Now, sometimes we can come to God, but my brother and my sister, sometimes we come with tantrums, man, and there's protocol in his presence. We can judge some of the uh, church flow guys of the past. We can judge them and say, uh, 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 uh. but you know, we cannot become arrogant. That's what that verse in Malachi said. You cannot become arrogant. For us to know that when you give your life to Christ, you are saved. For us to have that assurance in our heart that when you believe in God, when you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. There's some guys that gave their lives for that. There's some guys that went through fire, that were thrown in fire, that were, that were what's that word? Martyred. To believe that, oh, today is easy. Some do, some do not. But they have the opportunity to give their lives to Christ and be saved and, and miss eternal hell. You sitting here, you have that choice. But some guys, in the beginning, they gave their lives for that. And you don't go and judge them. Yes, they had mistakes. Calvin, and not Calvin Klein, guy in the beginning uh, long ago, and Luther and those guys, they rose up and told the Roman Catholics, ah, he's not paying and then your sin will be forgiven. And the priest said, you must pay this and you must pray uh, 50 times and then you will be forgiven. Hello? No. I said, even if I must give my life, we are saved by grace. We are saved in him as our righteousness. We are saved through faith. We are saved by surrendering to him through Christ. Christ is done on the cross and nothing more. And revival brings the centrality of Christ, always. In the heart of revival, Christ is central. And you honor them for what happened. And praise God, a lot of the churches then got out of some of that rubbish. Even the Roman Catholic, they, they left that rubbish. Hello? But I'm just saying, don't you judge any other church. I, you have no right to stand on the law with this and judge our forefathers. You with me? What says you Honor your forefathers. Not worship them. That rubbish is how the enemy can fake the honor of your ancestors. You honor the ancestors by learning from their mistakes, by building on their success and strengths. That's how you honor. And you will have your destiny. But no worshiping ancestors. That's rubbish. Hey, are you with one another? Listen to this, Job. Stop and consider God's oneness. And at the end of the day... At the end of the day, the man said what? He had all these questions. And then God came. He came and uh, talked to him about the, you remember we talked about this, the crocodile and the ostrich. And this is a man with 50, 55 serious questions for God. And God ignores him, and all his questions. And he talks to him about crocodile and this and then that. You have all these questions in prayer before God, and you only accept that it's the voice of God when it's an answer, logically answering your question. Meanwhile, and you think it's the devil talking about the crocodile about this. I'm not saying, it's figuratively speaking. You understand? And this is a voice speaking about this and that. That doesn't make sense about your questions before the Lord. Maybe that was really God. So that at the end of the day, you will stop it. Tell your neighbor, stop it. You had a chance, Arthur, to say it to me. 
you know. Now what am I saying? Stop it. Consider. See. 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 And then Job said, I will stop. I, I will stop speaking. I Forgive me, Lord, for speaking of things I don't understand at all. But I repent. I will be teachable because now I have seen. I have seen. I have seen you. Because God showed himself to him. No. He talked about creation. He talked about a lot of principles. He didn't answer one of his questions. And after you had your time with God, you seek his presence. And after he answered nothing of your questions, and he started to speak to you, at some stage you just say, Phew, those questions, it uh, doesn't matter anymore. The answers. But I've seen you, Lord. I've seen you. Stand on his word and you will see his presence. Stand on his word. And at the end of the day, you will see him. But you don't curse. You don't get an issue with God. When she said, curse God and die, we will say, we will never do that. But in our hearts, we can get an issue with God. That's the place where I start not to have respect for him because I throw a tantrum where there's some protocol in his presence. And that's where I started with say, some of the, what we call the religious churches. Some of them have uh, some real respect for God. And that we're not supposed to lose. When we have the freedom in our expression with God, you're not supposed to lose that protocol in his presence. Amen. He's supposed to have manners with your father. If you have respect for your earthly dad, you will have certain manners. So it's not you're under the law of manners. No. But because you have respect for your father, you will have certain manners. Amen. Okay. Next one. We're going for a landing. Exodus 14. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the Lord that the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today will you will never everybody say never. never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. How do you say it in a holy way? Shut up. In your tone of voice. Shut up. <laughs> I don't know. What are we saying? Oh, come on, man. This is guys 430 years, generation after generation. My pa, my grandpa, my grandpa's grandpa, grandpa, grandpa. They were all slaves. There's a certain mentality. I'm having the slave mentality. And my brother, my sister, now you got out of that place and you come to a place and now we're going to have a breakthrough. We're going to Canaan and the next moment, dead end. Here we are stuck. Who of you, you got delivered, you got some freedom, you stand on the word, you start to confess the word, you start to pray, and you have see some breakthroughs, and then suddenly you look ahead and you see 100% logic, there's no, no breakthrough for the future. I'm stuck. And what happens? Your past come back. And all that chachas come to come and get you, that fears and anxiety and what, 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 what and compromise and Focusing on yourself and whatever. And that thing is coming to you. And in that place where God wants to bring you, God, not the devil, to a dead end, to the dead end. Where you have nothing that you can see ahead of you that makes sense. Nothing makes sense. Why did we have to go through all of this? So that we are here at the dead end. Moses, in that place, said, do not be afraid. Stand firm, you will see. Stand and see. Everybody say, stand and see. That's what we are talking about. Stand firm. You don't run away. You don't go and fight. Remember, you don't turn around by faith and you fight Pharaoh. Rubbish, you're going to die. You stand firm because God's going to fight. God's going to organize. But his strategy, you're looking at the enemy, and God come and destroy the enemy, come and destroy the enemy. Meanwhile, you're looking there, and you're missing that this side, there's an open sea. And you're going to die in your situation, not in Jesus' name, but you're going to die in your situation if you keep your eye on the enemy, keep your eye on Pharaoh, he is coming, he is coming, and I know what happened with that man and that Egyptians for 430 years in my life. 
I know what happened. I must fight him in the name of Jesus. And meanwhile, if you just turn around, you would have seen the salvation of God. An open Red Sea. Where he was supposed to just walk through and let God deal with the enemy. And let them all drown. Unfortunately, with many opportunities in our life, tomorrow, next week, God wants to give you certain opportunities. But if you just fight your situation, just fight your fears and certain things, uh, there's some things, yes, man, that we must stand in the name of Jesus and look that giant in, in, the, in the eye. If Holy Spirit guides you like that. But so many other times, God does not want you to get involved in some fights. And then that fight is in your heart, in your mind, and with people, and with whatever, with circumstance, that you fight the circumstance. Instead of turn around, see the salvation of God. But you get involved with Pharaoh, you're going to die, man. Not in Jesus' name, because we're not going to do that anymore. You don't look at the enemy. I must turn my back on the enemy that is coming at a speed. Turn your back. And I'm walking to the Red Sea. What pathetic strategy. <laughs> and they, phew. do not be afraid. Stand firm. Now, why does God do that? Why did he not open the Red Sea and then tell the people, see, you don't have to be afraid. Sometimes I, that's how we want to do it. You know, God in his mercy. You know, we will open the sea, then we will not be afraid, then we will stand firm, and then we are seeing the deliverance of the Lord that God is bringing us today. Yay, and the Egyptians, I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but yes, we will not see them hopefully again. And then we want to have the faith when the Red Sea first opened. But he's saying this before anything happens, when what he says is absolutely ridiculous according to logic. So when will you will find it absolutely ridiculous because you have a brain, you have logic in your mind. God going to put it out there. <laughs> he's going to put it out there because he's pleased with faith on earth. In heaven, that cannot happen. But on earth, with faith. Are you with me? Take the promises of God. Not when you see, not just... I'm taking it by faith when I see the logic of what God is doing. If God is saying to me, giving me the strategy, I'm going to open up the sea. I promise you that will work and, 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 and you will go through and the Pharaoh will, will, will drown. Yes, I stand on the promises of God. That's what God's going to do. No. When you don't understand at all the promises of God, when nothing makes sense in what God is saying to you, that's when you stand. And that's when you, the Red Sea will open up for you. You still here? Everybody died? Hello? Your flesh only. Do not be afraid. Stand firm, stand firm, and you will see. And you will see. If you stand firm, you will see the deliverance of the Lord. He will bring you today. Egyptians, you see today, you will never. Every, everybody say, never. Anybody of you have some Egyptians in your life that's bullying you with some struggles that you never ever want to see again? I know about some Egyptians in my life that I don't want to see again. And if I could see that promise of God, whoa, man, the, the, the Egyptians that you are seeing today, you will never see again. I want that promise. I want some of that breakthrough. I hope you also. You will never see again. Why? The Lord will fight for you. You need only to get out of that fight and stand still. And stop throwing a tantrum and stop fearing and have anxiety and stress and this and all that stuff. Stop with all of that. And just be still. Stand still. Be at peace. That still is not just keep quiet. Be at peace, in a place of peace, and look and see, expect God to move. God's going to do that in the end time more and more. He's going to do it in the church. Stop and see. 
don't get involved with a fight when the heavens and the earth are going to be shaken, when, the, when it's going to be, it, it could be my brother, my sister, it could be three minutes and it's the end of the world. It could be three minutes with a few knoppies. And knoppies, what's the knoppy? Buttons, a few buttons. With a, let's call it a, easily a hundred atom bombers, atom bombs. And uh, just, just that. It's the end of the world. It's only God keeping some sanity in some people that that is not happening tomorrow. That's all. The end can be so near. The setup in a logical way in, out there is so ready, 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 ready. God said, I will never, the rainbow, there is not some other, the rainbow that is the promises of God, that I will never destroy this place, this earth, with water again. But God said, I will destroy it with fire. God said so. I'm not saying, please don't quote me, that all the atom bombs is going to be the fire. But tomorrow he can destroy the whole earth with fire, with a few guys just pushing a button. He can, if he wants to. Is it just him holding some guys in some sanity? And not to be deceived in their absolute ridiculous insanity. What they're running with. Because why? Because God is waiting for his church. Church is not waiting for him. He's waiting for his church to grow up. Where it will not be about them and their needs, but the way it will be about him. It will be all about him. God, I need to grow up to be ready as your bride for your coming, so that you and the Spirit have, will have the same cry into the nation, same cry unto heaven. And the same cry in the Spirit and the bride says, Come. And the, those who are thirsty, the Spirit and the bride say, Come. Those who want to take the water. And five verses further, so, even so, come Lord Jesus. I'm calling forth the nations to the feet of Jesus with the Spirit. I'm calling forth the master of the universe to come. For the nations and the master to be united in the wedding feast of the Lamb. Oh, come on. God, come and help us. Help us to see. God, we, we're choosing today to stand on your word. Forgive us for foolishness, building a life on sand. Quick fix, quick answers that we wanted in our lives. Forgive us for that, Lord. God, help us to have manners. Forgive us for not having manners and protocol in your presence. Teach us how to be in your presence, Lord. I pray for every man, every woman in this place, not to be foolish, but to have time with the word in the presence of your spirit. God, that we will understand what is laying ahead. When everything is shaken, that what, was, what is unshakable in our lives, that it will be revealed, and that we will build accurately, accurately. I pray that every man and woman in this place will know how to stand on your word, not stand on opinions and, and hurts and offenses and, and opinions. God, that we will stand on your word and your word alone, the revelation of who you are, and that we will see in the spirit to the, into the place where you are even more, that we will, with a cry, cry out to see more of you in the future, more of you tomorrow, more of you next week, so that ultimately we will see everything of you in your coming. Thank you that you reveal it to every man and woman in this place. I pray for a hunger, a hunger. God, that if we are not relating to you, that we will there will be a cry, there will be a missing. No, I'm missing out. That I know in my heart I'm missing out. I'm missing his presence. I'm, I'm longing to, to experience his presence, his voice, his heart. Eternal life to know you. Thank you, Lord, that you come and touch every man and woman in this place, reaching out to you in a special way today. And that they will be never, ever, ever be the same after today. In Jesus' name, so we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.